My name is Earl Hansen. I'm the uh, author of the book, uh, the Limeboy book, and of course um, the designer and builder of all of the tooling and machinery that's uh, included in this package that is in the uh, blueprint section. I'm going to be your um, narrator during this uh, eight-hour video. Actually, it's about eight hours long. Uh, the the, the, in, the um, introduction that I'm giving you now is not part of the uh, actual uh, seven-hour video. Um, in this discussion, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, what, is a, what is line boring, what is in boring, what tooling is involved, and how to make all of this equipment and how to make many different types of uh, boring, different sizes of boring uh, machinery for different kinds of work. To begin with, um, a line boring is, uh, of course, accomplished by positioning a boring bar. And, of course, the blueprints show you exactly how to build those boring bars, all different sizes. But you position your boring bar in the bore. You position it in reference to other bores, and in reference possibly to old, the old uh, bores are or the old worn out section as much as you can determine. This is all in the book, tells you exactly how to do all this. And you uh, you set the uh, bar then in a normal normal position, parallel and and a normal in relation to other other locations. Uh, once this is done, and, it's, and I generally use wooden wedges uh, to stabilize the bar exactly where you want it. And when everything is measured, everything is exactly correct. And you'll see this in, in, in during this uh, during this video. Um, then you slide your bearings in position, you uh, tack weld them, and you put bearings on, on all sides, if possible, all sides of the bores that you're going to be doing. If you're doing two bores, three, four, five, whatever it is, you put bearings on both sides of those uh, bores, that gives you a very rigid bar. Rigid in a sense that it's not going to drift sideways, not going to be, be moving on you, but you will be able to slide it in and out very freely. Uh, of course, then you put a, a power source to, to turn the bar, to, to, to turn the bar in a circular motion, and a feed mechanism to feed it uh, into the work and out. Then, of course, you just put tool bits in position, indicate those tool bits for the right bore sizes, or remove the steel that you put in, generally speaking, by welding, and, um, and that's what, that's what uh, line boring is all about. Uh, this book uh, deals with uh, a discussion on how you can build very, very large boring bars, uh, read uh, read these chapters dealing with uh, building boring bars and, um, and and boring bar equipment. There's also tooling uh, extensively uh, showed in in the blueprints that will fit onto the diameter of various t sizes of boring bars. These tool a lot of this tooling is expandable. That means that it can be made to fit any size boring bar you want to use. There's discussions in the book that deal with how to build a six inch boring bar, for example, six inch diameter. Why would you ever want to do that? Well. What happens if somebody wants you to bore a 24-inch diameter? And it's very, very good money when you start getting into brain boring jobs. Um, the, the solution to that problem is to use a very large boring bar. But that doesn't mean that you have to use a solid steel bar. You can use a hollow bar called Shelby tubing. And there's this, 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 it's completely discussed in the book. And you use Shelby tubing with a wall thickness, say, 6-inch diameter with a wall thick, thickness of Oh, it varies from three-eighths of an inch to uh, three-quarters or even an inch thick, depending on what kind of work you have. But in, in doing, using this type of a system, you can actually bore any size bore you want. You can, buy, you can bore 24-inch diameter, 20-inch, uh, 48-inch. Uh, it's immaterial to the, to the system. There's tooling and equipment designed in the blueprints and all here that will show you exactly how to do it. Just read the book under these chapters. What's the, vi the video here it deals with primarily bores that are, oh, six or eight inches and smaller in diameter. But the technology is in, is in the blueprints, is in the book. So uh, be, be cognizant of what's taking place here. End boring is entirely different. End boring is, um, is using a self-contained machine. That is, the machine, an end boring machine, has uh, the spindle, which is the turning part that, that holds the tools, that is set inside of a spindle housing. The spindle housing is large, it's, it's hollow, and it's very precision. And uh, there's bearings that hold the spindle in position and seals and etc. And then there is a power source mounted on the speed, this uh, end boring machine. And, uh, and it gives the, the, the torque or the, the, the turning of the, of the spindle. And then of course there's a feed mechanism. And then there's a housing that, that the, uh, that the, uh, the, the uh, spindle housing slides in and out of, and that housing 
is, is what you use to set up an indicate in to be able to reach inside of a bore from one end and reach in and do precision boring and snap ring and o-ring grooving and all those kind of work can be accomplished with uh, with in boring equipment and the tooling and discussion that is uh, contained in this book. You'll find it very interesting, I'm sure. Now, in regards to uh, watching this video, uh, as an example, uh, the video you're seeing right now at this moment, uh, this tool is cutting. Um, when you're watching this type of videos, not just this, but all of these, be cognizant of not just the smoke that's coming up and the cool as it's cutting. These are interesting. But look at the way this, the bearings are set. Look at the way that the, the, the brackets that are holding the bearings in place is positioned. This is what this, uh, this whole video is all about. As an example, why, is the, uh, why are these, are these um, um, adapters and, uh, and stabilizers positioned uh, and tack welded like they are? Notice that tack weld there. Uh, notice that, that bracket tack welding that's setting on the, on the uh, bearing there. Why is that? Why did he only tack weld it on one side? Why isn't it welded solid? Uh, generally speaking, if you're a welder, you've been welding things, you, you really weld things solid to stay for a long, long time. Well, not a long bore, you don't want to do that. If you do, you're going to spend uh, maybe a day or a day and a half, two days line boring, and then you're going to spend a half a day tearing it down. And you don't, you're not, and you do not use cutting torches to take these things apart. As an example, this bracket you see there, you cut a, you use a cutting torch on that, but you said you won't have a bearing left. You'll cut it all to pieces. So the thing to do is to give serious thought to uh, when you set these jobs up as to how you're going to tear them down. Notice this little job right here. You can put a pipe wrench on that on that piece of steel bracket going up, and you could twist that, and it would pop right off if you weld it only on one side, both the top and the bottom only on one side. So these are the things that you want to watch for, and don't don't watch just for uh, just the first few minutes of the of the, of the video. You want to watch uh, all seven hours of this video to see why why is it set up this way? Why did he uh, take this bearing and set it in a certain position. Uh, why is it on, a, on an angle? In other words, the fixture that's holding the bearing, why is it set on an angle? Why isn't it nice and square? Um, you know, these bearings are universal bearings. Uh, you can slide the bearing on, and you can shift the fixture all in all different angles, and 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 um, and, and, uh, and, and, it's, and it's immaterial to, to, to the fixtures, how they're positioned. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever, of course. But the bearing will always be, be normal and square and running perfectly with the uh, with the uh, boring bar. Uh, you're going to see also in this video um, some some very precision work in measuring the bores that you just saw this caliper being used in that regard. There's also uh, aspects of dealing with, uh, as an example in this video, you're seeing um, me uh, doing some. Uh, Honing. I, I'm honing a bore. This is a very elaborate uh, uh, setup. This is one of the videos that's in this uh, this uh, uh, presentation a little bit later. Um, the hone I'm using is a very fine hone. It's very precision. It can actually hone bores almost to 16 inch diameters. As an example, a cylinder or something like that. If you wanted a hydraulic cylinder, if you want to repair it, you can repair very very large bores with this. Uh, this bore I just finished here is. Um, very precision is is round and straight within about a that about a half a thousand, and um, you'll see in just a few moments uh, the sleeve that uh, is put into this. And the sleeve actually is staked with uh, with pins that holds it in position. Uh, this 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 particular job was set up with a spider bearing on one end on the big diameter on the right side of the of the of the picture here, and um, and it, and the the bore the, the boring bar was set up. Actually, within a thousand or two of the center line of the whole unit, it's a beautiful job. But this is just one of many jobs that you'll be able to do with this with this system. As you watch the uh, the video, one of the most uh, important parts of this video that you're going to be watching is the welding. The welding that the chapter is uh, dealing with welding, and it and it talks at the outset of that chapter. Uh, welding is the key to to precision heavy equipment line boring. And it really is. Um, if you're a good welder, and you may well be a, a better welder than I am, it's very possible. Right. As an example, um, this particular little bore here, it's only about probably about three and a half inch diameter, 
four inches diameter, and uh, and yet the amount of well that you have to lay in there, it stacks. You stack it. You'll see many videos of that uh, throughout this uh, seven hours. It has to be stacked. The penetration into the base material has to be very very good. Uh, I, I I figure about uh, 20 percent of the of the well should be should be penetrating into the steel. The rest of it is stacked next to the to the uh, well that's uh, that was just laid out. So you have it all the way around the circle of the diameter. All kinds of welding is discussed in the chapter dealing with welding, even auto automatic welding machines. I think they're very good. I think that uh, they're fantastic in many ways, but in my, in my opinion, uh, there's, they will probably do about 70% of, of the welding that, uh, that I do and the, the line boring that I do. They'll probably do about 70%. Some of it they will not do, and, the, and it's discussed in the book very extensively. So as you uh, watch this, uh, take be very cognizant of what's happening. Look look at the way the bearings are set up. Look at the as an example, this particular job. This is a small diameter bore. This is uh, actually it's an autom it's an automotive type uh, boring machine that's, that's driving double universals. You can see the universals to the right side of this uh, picture. And um, and as the uh, as the bar turns and uh, of course it bores, uh, it, it does a very good job. They're very very good. Uh, the Van Norman is the one I use, Van Norman Boring Bar. They were built in the 30s, 1930s, 1940s, 19, early 1950s. Um, you can generally find one probably at the time of the writing and, and producing of this uh, uh, package here, this vocational package. Uh, you, could probably, you could probably go to a, an older machine shop in town that does uh, automotive repair rebuilding engines, etc., and uh, I would say you could probably pick one up from 200 to $500, and that would include uh, the complete set of tooling that goes with that. Um, it should have the tooling. If it doesn't have it, then you do not have the micrometers. You do not have the adjustment, the, the slide-in attachments that hold the tool bits and all of this. So be sure you get the whole package when you, uh, when you buy something like that. Otherwise, a machine like that is only good for or, uh, or line boring, using it as a line boring machine, and, and they work very well for that. So um, as you watch this and uh, take note of what's taking place, be very cognizant of what's happening. Uh, I would say that in watching this uh, video, if you're very cognizant of what's taking place, if you take a few notes as you watch this, as you um, as you watch and you you put your, yourself into to my positions, I'm sitting there running all these different jobs. Um, think about um, why is this all taking place? Why is this done? Why is that done? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? And again, question yourself as you, as we go through this uh, program. I'm going to be discussing with you uh, throughout this uh, uh, video at different times. I am actually speaking from the jobs themselves, and uh, at times I'll be. Uh, uh, as I am now talking over, uh, over, over the picture themselves, explaining certain aspects of it. I would say that uh, in watching this video, you will uh, probably derive about 90% of the book. In other words, if you're really cognizant of what's taking place here, you're going to learn about 90% of what's in the book and line boring. And I would